So, in the, in the last session, we did um, differential expression testing and we ended up with loads and loads of genes that are differentially expressed um, for the different conditions. Okay, so now we would like to make sense out of these uh, sets of differentially expressed genes. Um, and this is usually done by gene set enrichment analysis. Um, so this is a method to identify classes of genes that are overrepresented in large sets of genes. And those sets or classes of genes have an association with a disease phenotype. Um, we will use the tool called G-Profiler. Um, it comes as a um, web resource um, and with um, this tutorial we will make um, um, basically we, we how's it called uh, we send requests um, to this web page um, through through the Python script. So there's a Python um, yeah, API that helps us to make requests to this G-Profiler web page. Um, if you're not super happy with um, sending requests through Python, um, you can also have a look at the Metascape uh, website. Um, there you can upload um, a, a set of genes that you're uh, interested in, um, and then Metascape immediately tells you what, where, in, in which um, gene sets you have an enrichment. Okay, um, gene sets are usually predefined. So you have, for example, the gene ontology, so GO, um, and usually it's referred to GO terms, and there's three different uh, categories of GO terms, which are biological process, um, cellular components, and metabolic pathways, as far as I'm aware. Correct me if I'm wrong. So um, once you upload your um, genes of interest to uh, either G-Profiler or Metascape, you will be um, yeah, confronted with a lot of different terms uh, and probably not all of them make sense and there is a reason for that. So we have a lot of different um, yeah, genes that are differentially expressed and when we start to make gene set enrichment analysis it can look for example like this. So we have our GO term, so from gene ontology and we see here in this plot um, three different types of information. Um, on the one hand, uh, how many of our genes that are from our query um, fall into that term. So that's the circle size, so gene overlap. And the x-axis is um, the gene ratio. So um, that, is, um, that tells us how large the term is actually so how many genes are um, organized under that term. So for example, for the first one, we have, uh, let's say, 15 genes that fall into this uh, category. Um, and they make up 10% of the genes that are actually organized under that term. So smaller, so more specific uh, genes that are usually smaller, so they contain less genes and really general uh, gene sets. For example, regulation of cell cycle, they contain a lot of cells. Also, um, there's one, G, uh, um, one GO term that is called biological process. That's like one of the most generic terms that you can possibly find and it contains thousands of genes. So there's, there are more informative terms and there are less informative terms. So here in this plot, the color uh, also tells us how significant um, this overlap with the gene set is. Um, here the, the blue color means higher significance um, and the uh, purple color means lower significance. Still, there's something that I would like to draw your attention to. That's this paper. 
Um, and the title already tells us really what it was about. So most random gene expression signatures are significantly associated with breast cancer outcome. So that means if you take a random gene set um, and you paste it to Metascape or your favorite gene set enrichment analysis tool, um, it will most certainly return something that is significant. That doesn't mean that it's meaningful. It can almost always be associated to breast cancer outcome or anything else. So that's the plot from this paper. Um, so MZIGDB is a, a database with uh, molecular signatures of uh, certain processes, molecular processes. Um, and these are gene sets that are actually, yeah, they do make sense. So they they really reflect a true biological processes. So, and we see this p-value distribution that we find for genes from this signature of MZIGDB. And we also see uh, how random signatures um, distribute in their p-value, in their significance. And what you see is that these two distributions are, yeah, overlapping pretty strongly. So um, that means if you have a random signature, it, it can also turn up with a super low p-value. Um, and this is something that is not really is not corrected for. Not really is not a, is the wrong term here. This is something no one tells you about that uh, the signature that you use um, might make sense, but it also can just recreate, create, yeah, uh, just be a false positive result. There's one tool I found that takes into account these kind of uh, distributions, and this is this F. Uh, GCA tool. However, um, I only found it as a bioarchive paper. It's an R tool and um, I think the, uh, the author did not go through the pain of uh, pushing it through peer review somewhere. So that means that when you look at uh, gene sets and uh, gene set enrichment analysis, beware that some of the outcomes are, might be random um, and we have to face the, the problem that we immediately or almost always go into cherry picking the, the terms that make sense to us. Um, and if you have your gene set that you think that's super relevant, um, please double check it with um, a complementary um, yeah, method that it's actually true. So 